Hey, what's up, guys? Hard Leg Joe here, coming at you with the What a Duck profile for episode 171, Christmas Gifts 2018. For our monster lineup, we have one reason for the season, three golden ornaments, three Christmas lights dragon, three Santa Claus, three Holy Ghosts, three delicious Christmas fish, three Hanukkah candles, and three bells to ring in the new year. For our spells, we have one day of peace, three golden chalices, three symbols of capitalistic marketing, three gift exchange, three sad refugees that you should donate charity to, three messengers of peace, and three Christmas angels. For our traps, we have three maids of milking, three holy resurrections, and three gift cards. Our extra deck consists of one giant present, a bunch of random nonsense, and two Linkle Bells, who are very important for putting on top of the Christmas tree. The side deck I normally go over later, but in this case, it's mostly just random stuff I was thinking about using. Honestly, using a side deck with this at all kind of feels uh, antithetical to what the whole deck is about, which is Christmas giving. We have effects that give our opponents monsters, effects that give them cards to their hand, and effects that give them time to think about their life, because they they stall. Mostly, though, what this deck gives is a free win to your opponent. This deck does not work well, it is not consistent, and it doesn't really have a win condition other than maybe stalling your opponent out until they deck out the old-fashioned way. As such, there's not really any combos or synergies to explain. There's no key cards you need to know to play this deck. Most of this stuff was just picked out to meet the Christmas theme. We are already here, though, so I'm going to go ahead and give a brief rundown of each card if you're curious. But, you know, if you want to play this, you could probably do it blind without much effort. Uh, anyway, starting at the bottom, we have a present card. Your opponent discards their hand and draws five cards. If you use this when they have a whole bunch of cards in their hand, it can make them deck out faster. Uh, most of the time, though, if you get it any time past the first turn, it usually just gives them five cards. So it, it fits the gift-giving theme. Uh, Trickstar Reincarnation is pretty much the same thing, so I included it. Even though art-wise, it doesn't really fit the theme unless you want to make a tangential tie between Reincarnation and Jesus. But uh, that that's kind of a stretch. Uh, Wabaku is probably the best stall card here. You can chain it, make sure none of your monsters are destroyed, and you take no damage this turn, which fits thematically with the theme of peace on Earth and giving your opponent time to think. It also has three vaguely holy-looking ladies on it, which could stand in for just about anything you wanted to represent. Uh, traffic Control says your opponent can't attack if they have three or more monsters, which is even more stall, and, and it's got an angel on it. That's kind of Christmassy, right? And she's keeping goblins out, and goblins are definitely not for the holidays, so so that's, that's how it fits. Uh, next up, we have even more stall with Messenger of Peace, which, you know, is a message of peace. Pretty simple. Stops high attack monsters from attacking. Has practically no cost. Just, just very nice overall. Uh, Refuge in Audacity is one of the only new cards here. And it's pretty much only here because I wanted to use some newer stuff to differentiate this build from the older versions. Uh, it's, it's a pretty neat card. You gain 300 life points when your opponent summons a monster. And if you have 10,000 or more life points, your monsters are not destroyed by battle. Just another solid, nice stall card. Uh, Gift Exchange is a staple of the Christmas deck, both for its art and because it lets you give your opponent a gift from the deck. If you're feeling charitable, you can give them a pot of indulgence. Just a little bit of draw power can weaken your opponent's extra deck if they decide to use it. And our extra deck is pretty much useless, so th you can use this yourself if you need a little extra draw power. Alternatively, a slightly more effective tactic is to give your opponent Cup of Ace. Because, I mean, either way, heads or tails, uh, you have a 50% chance of drawing cards regardless of who uses it. Uh, and, and as far as the theme goes, it's a win-win. Either you get more cards and you can survive and give your opponent more gifts, or your opponent gets more cards and they, they feel happy. Uh, one Day of Peace doesn't need any explanation. It's draw, it's stun, it gives your opponent's cards. Its, its name gives you the warm fuzzies when applied to the holiday season. Pretty much just the best card in this deck, in my opinion. 
Uh, Battle Fader ringing in the new year with its little bell. I, I think that's what it is. Just a little more stall, prevents direct attacks, ends the battle phase. Aroma Jar is one of the few monsters in here you can actually play on your side of the field. It's also pretty much the only Hanukkah-related card I could kind of find, because uh, it's got candles, and uh, Hanukkah's got candles. They, got, they light the menorah. It's a festival of lights. Uh, but yeah, this thing can't be destroyed by battle, and during each end phase you gain 500 life points. Uh, which in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! means it'll last all of one turn, but you know, if you go up against certain decks, maybe you can keep this out for a while, gain a couple life points, stall a little bit. Uh, Silent Wavi, the Christmas Fish, staple of the deck through the years. You can summon it to your opponent's side of the field, and when you do, they draw a card and you gain 2,000 life points. Uh, it's pretty much the most generous card in Yu-Gi-Oh! considering it gives the opponents a level 4 monster and a free draw. So it, it fits really well in this. Uh, surprisingly, this actually has a little bit of synergy this year, too, with some of our card choices. If your opponent controls two monsters, you can use Wobby to give them a third, which will make a traffic control live, and it'll make sphere mode live. Speaking of sphere mode, it's the traditional Yu-Gi-Oh! Christmas gift. Uh, you can normal summon it to your opponent's side of the field by tributing three of their monsters, and not only is it pretty much useless to them, but it comes back to you at the end of their turn, if they can't link it away or something. If you ever win a game in this deck, it's most likely due to this. You're going to sphere mode your opponent, and they're going to surrender out of frustration. Uh, in a break from tradition, though, we are playing one Wing Dragon of Ra, which you can summon from your hand or deck by tributing the sphere mode if it gets back to your side of the field. Uh, it doesn't really fit the theme, but I figured I'd give my audience a gift this year by actually trying to summon an Egyptian god in the what a deck, because a lot of people ask for an Egyptian god deck. Our only other somewhat serious beater is Mana Dragon Zirnatotron, who I've named the Christmas Light Dragon, because he's got, like, red and green lights on him. He just kind of looks cool. This card's effect is, if a spell trap you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect and is either banished or in the graveyard, you can summon this from your hand or your graveyard, and then set one spell trap that is banished or in your graveyard. Uh, basically, this is here to protect all our spell traps, because we have a lot of them. If your opponent twin twisters, you're like messenger of peace, and you're a traffic control, you can summon this, and then set one of these two back on the field, and activate it again next turn, assuming you survive that long. Uh, I guess Ghost of Bewitchment is also somewhat of a beater, or at least it can be. It gets different effects depending on which zone it's in. If you put it in the leftmost zone, its attack and defense go up by a thousand, so it becomes a 2300 beat stick if you need it to be. Mostly, though, I just use it for its stall effect. If you play it in the center zone, it can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, which combined with something like Refuge and Audacity or Wabaku make it pretty much invincible. It's also another kind of newer card, and I wanted to throw something in here. It's like the Holy Ghost or like the Christmas Chicken. You can, you can kind of get some stuff in there, maybe. Last but not least, we of course have the main man himself, Santa Claus, who, if, uh, if you're unfamiliar with him, he's pretty much just a kaiju. You could special summon it to your opponent's field by tributing one of their monsters, although you have to summon it in defense mode and has 2,500 defense. Also, when it's summoned, your opponent draws a card in their end phase, it's a nice little Christmas gift, sort of fits with the theme. And, uh, r really, that's it. Like I said, there's not really much to this. It's just a goofy little thing I like to do around this time of the year. Uh, I actually wasn't sure if I would do it this year, but the, there were so many people asking me for it in the comments and in Twitch chat, I decided I'd go ahead and throw something together. So, I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to see the Christmas gift deck in action, you can check out the main video. There I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro, trying to spread a little Christmas cheer. Uh, that video should be on the end card and link down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck, have fun, and have a happy holidays. Hey, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. Ha <laughs> ha!